itself and will continue to protect itself against the UBLs and anybody else of that ilk who want to do us and all Americans harm. We're in a position today where we can do something if we only will. We can't kick down the situation on the MEK anymore or our Camp Ashraf. We're running out of time. We've got a deadline coming up. Uh, we know that we can count on other international organizations to help somewhat, but when you get down to it, the real force, the real factor, the real pusher and shover is going to be the United States of America. And that's why we have to encourage our Department of State to come up with the answers on what they are going to do to finish this review. As I say, you've given them a lot to think about. You've given them a third way to proceed towards towards removing what I would say uh, is an autocratic theocracy of, of people who are certainly opposing anything like a free democratic republic. Uh, and I, I also would say uh, that we are owed an explanation uh, by uh, both the Department of State and by uh, President Maliki uh, on what actually happened uh, at, at Camp Ashraf. Uh, I'm not satisfied I understand that. I think that we need more assurances of what is going to happen in terms of protection as we proceed. And then, of course, the final justice. <laughs> Who leads us to the relocation? Who is the individual? Who is the country? What is the mechanism that takes us to the relocation? We're running out of time for that answer. That has to happen very quickly. And finally, uh, I would say this. Uh, a colleague of mine uh, in Congress now uh, said that one of the failures of the US, United States of America in the last century, the late last century, when we were beginning to understand terrorism and, and uh, this uh, autocratic, uh, desp despotic leadership that was taking hold in some places, is because we, didn't, we did not ID the implacable fanatics who are out there. These are people who are openly committed uh, to our destruction, and I would suggest that we learn something, that an enemy who wants to kill you is not an enemy that you can negotiate with. Thank you very much. And the policy issues I dealt with were fundamentally about geopolitical power and security issues, very traditionally defined, and more specifically about the balance of power in the Gulf. Uh, but let me say here at the outset, that though even if I weren't a security professional, I still think that the U.S. as a whole needs to measure and evaluate its Iran policy against the standard of how it is dealing with Iran as a strategic challenge. I believe this is the most important prism, although not the only one, uh, by which to frame and judge our Iran policies. I believe uh, this approach, which has been tried periodically over the past 20 years or so when in vogue, has not advanced U.S. policy aims over the past few decades, nor has it seemed to help the cause of freedom and prosperity in Iran. Now, this is not to say that Iran is just a security problem for the U.S. with military solutions. The relationship, the region, and what is at stake is far too complex for that. However, I put small hope in traditional diplomatic engagement or outreach to this Iranian regime. However, let me make a non-political military point directly up front and then circle back to it in my conclusion to underscore the relationship between different elements of American power. And here's the point. There is nothing that is likely to be more decisive and more influential in reducing the strategic threats from Iran's current regime than having a vigorous democratic opposition within Iran.